America plans $50 billion in arms sales to counter the perceived threat from Iran. Japanese voters deliver their verdict on the Prime Minister's scandal-hit government. Can sport unify a bloodied nation? Iraq takes on Saudi Arabia in the Asian Cup football final. This is BBC World. Welcome from me, Demetha Luthra, also in this programme. Old comrades play war games together. Could Russia and China form a new military alliance? As the drug-tainted Tour de France draws to a close, there are questions about the future of cycling's premier event. Washington is reported to be ready to sell $50 billion worth of high-tech weapons to its allies in the Middle East. Israel's Prime Minister Ehud Olmert has already confirmed a 25% increase in U.S. defense aid over the next decade. It's worth $30 billion. His comments came after media reports in the United States that Washington is preparing a package of major arms sales to Saudi Arabia and the other Gulf states. It's because of concerns about the potential threat from Iran. Jonah Fisher reports. With every passing day and suicide attack, the pressure on George Bush to get out of Iraq grows. But America's Middle Eastern allies fear a withdrawal would lead to a power vacuum, or even worse, an Iranian-dominated Iraq. According to media reports, the United States is preparing a huge arms deal with Saudi Arabia and smaller Gulf states. Local elections have started across North Korea. Every citizen over 17 must vote, but there is only one candidate for each constituency. A vote is taken to signify approval of the official candidate, but voting is not private and disapproval of the candidate is expressed by spoiling the ballot paper. One purpose of the election is to allow a thorough registration of the population. Taliban militants have ruled out more talks with the Afghan government over the remaining South Korean hostages as anxious relatives wait. The news comes as two Afghan lawmakers and several influential elders join the negotiations in Kabul. The militants are pressing for the release of prisoners in return for the hostages' freedom. India's eastern Bihar state is still suffering from extreme weather and floods, which have displaced hundreds of people and destroyed swathes of crops. At least 21 people have died as the result of the rains, which have continued over the past weeks. Hundreds of villagers have seen their houses washed away. For the first time ever, China is sending large numbers of troops to take part in military exercises thousands of kilometers from home. The soldiers are taking part in joint exercises with Russia and the other members of what's known as the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. While the maneuvers are officially about fighting terrorism, some analysts see them as the beginnings of a potential military alliance. It's called Peace Mission 2007 but it's intended to be a display of military force. Deep in the Ural Mountains, close to the border with Kazakhstan, Russia and China are demonstrating... Stay with BBC World, still to come in this programme. As the drug-tainted Tour de France draws to a close, what's the future of cycling's premier event? Video games are often seen as the enemy of exercise and have been linked to the rise of obesity among children. But now a school in America has started using a computer game in sports lessons and the workout is proving a hit. This sleepy town in the hills of West Virginia could be about to change the health of America's children and it needs it. Half of the children in this state are overweight. One in four are showing the early signs of heart disease. But for the sofa-bound PlayStation... This is BBC World, the main news. Arming the Middle East, America plans $50 billion worth of arms sales to counter what it sees as a threat from Iran. Voting is underway in one of Japan's most heated elections in years. The result could be critical for Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's political future. 
Gordon Brown travels to the United States today for his first meeting with President Bush since becoming Britain's Prime Minister. Mr. Brown said he was looking forward to the meeting and he declared that the relationship between Britain and America may become even stronger in the years ahead. It is bound to be different. The first Blair Bush meeting at Camp David sticks in the memory for the jeans that were too tight, the smile betraying first summit nerves, and the president's bizarre declaration that he and the prime minister used the same toothpaste. Gordon Brown knows. You can get more details about the news stories in this program by going to our website, bbcnews.com. You'll find background on the main stories, including reports that Washington is ready to sell $50 billion worth of high-tech weapons to its allies in the Middle East. Israel's Prime Minister Ehud Olmert has already confirmed a 25% increase in U.S. defense aid over the next decade, worth $30 billion. Washington is also said to be preparing a package of major arms sales to Saudi Arabia and the other Gulf states. You can also share your views on the main issues by clicking on the Have Your Say link. All that and more on bbcnews.com. Hard Talk is next with Stephen Sacker interviewing His Holiness the Pope. But first the weather with Dan Corbett.